America went back to the movies. We had some entertainment tragedies happen on the sets of Russ and at concert venues such as Astroworld. We also saw the cancellation of some celebrities. We're going to tell you who. And finally, Britney is free. That's right. We're taking a look back at the year of 2021, and it's all coming up right now on The Take. Hey everyone, and welcome to The Take. I'm Elizabeth Wagmeister. And I'm Clayton Davis, and we're here to give you our take on some of the year's biggest stories. That's right, Clayton. We are here with a very special episode. We are going to be talking about the biggest moments in Hollywood and the entertainment industry from 2021. Yep, Elizabeth, it's been a great year, not just the start of the show, but also a lot of interesting developments in the world of entertainment, and we're going to talk about it all. And let's start with... The release of the vaccine came in 2021, and that saw the release of movies once again. The theaters are open, and the biggest and highest grossing films of the year were established superhero properties. That included Shang-Chi, F9, Black Widow, A Quiet Place Part 2, and everything else that's come with that. Now we're asking the question, what do consumers want? Well, if you look at the top five grossing movies, also Venom was in there from the past year. You said it. It does seem like consumers are running to theaters for superhero films and established films. But what I will say is, yes, while a lot of these properties were either a sequel or a superhero comic book adaptation, there was something a bit different. Black Widow is a female-led superhero film, and Shang-Chi was a superhero film led by an Asian-American star. So I think that there is something a bit different because we're seeing a bit more diversity than we've seen in years past, and this proves that viewers and consumers want to see themselves reflected on screen. Yeah, and it's also happening behind the camera as we see with Kate Shortland directing, Dustin Daniel Cretton. And listen, I think as we look forward to 2022, let's not put anything against the originality. We're seeing a lot of original films. Mm -hmm. The streaming platforms are providing that. I think we're gonna see a lot of good things come. Absolutely, and I'm glad you brought up the streaming properties because that was another huge issue in 2021 is because of COVID, we saw this day and date release model, which really generated a lot of controversy. So it'll be interesting to see what happens in 2022 because all these studios, they want their own streamer to really be successful. But of course, there's this constant push and pull with the theaters. So we'll see what happens, but I don't think that streaming and watching from your house is going anywhere. Nope, not anytime soon. Moving on to some of the biggest tragedies that struck Hollywood this year. Tragedy occurred on the set of Alec Baldwin's film Rust when cinematographer Helena Hutchins was shot dead by what appears to be an accidental shooting, but details are still continuously coming out on this story every single day. I mean, within the past week, Alec Baldwin, he posted a letter that was in defense of the crew and the production on Rust because there's been this narrative that it was a chaotic set and that corners were cut and that is how this tragedy occurred. Alec Baldwin and many of the production members say that isn't true. Other production members are pointing the finger at a messy production and at Alec Baldwin. Now, first and foremost, what needs to be at the front of this story is the memory of Helena. And I have to say, something that has bothered me throughout this entire story is that Alec Baldwin has been speaking a lot in his own defense. Now, I understand he's Alec Baldwin. He's the star. He's the producer. He might feel like he needs to be the face of speaking out about this tragedy. But he did a major interview on ABC News with George Stephanopoulos, and that's where he said that he actually didn't pull the trigger. I think it would be best if he took a step back, let the authorities do what they need to do, and just make this a about Helena, not about yourself or anyone else. Absolutely, and this comes on the heels of the of the IATSE vote that you know all crew members were fighting for equal you know wages, rights, uh, time on set, and this comes on the heels of Astro World also, where public safety is being put to the back burner in in favor of more profits for studio executives, for music industry, and we just need to see that change across the board, and I think we'll see that change happen in 2022. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, it seems that the course of action is that something really terrible and really bad has to happen for there to be change in the entertainment industry, and that shouldn't be the case. Lives do not have to be taken for there to be change made. Our set should be safe. 
music venues should be safe. I'm glad that you brought up Astroworld because at Travis Scott's festival, 10 people were killed. Travis Scott also did an interview with Charlemagne the God, and he said that he did not see what was happening out in the crowd. Now, there's obviously a lot of different opinions on that, a lot of chatter that's going to continue, and also a lot of lawsuits in that story that remain. Let's move from tragedy on now to the controversies, where 2021 had some very problematic celebrities get in hot water for things that they have done and said, starting with America canceling Donald Trump at the election in 2020 and then seeing the January 6th insurrection take place. But it wasn't just that. We moved on to Mike Richards being named the Jeopardy host for exactly 20 days before getting fired as a producer. And then we saw Dave Chappelle get canceled for giving a very controversial stand-up special on Netflix. Before moving on to Ellen DeGeneres, who's been under fire for the way she treats her staff members, which has led to the ending of her show set to take place in 2022. So listen, we've had not cancel culture, accountability culture. Mm -hmm. There's a reckoning coming, people are getting what I believe they deserve for past behaviors that have been questionable, and we're having a dialogue about it, and we should continue to have that dialogue. Yeah, now when you say that people like Dave Chappelle and Ellen have been canceled, well, we put that in air quotes, yes. canceled, because they're still working. Yep. Now, of course, you know, everybody is innocent until proven guilty. In the case of Dave Chappelle, he has many fans who say he's a comedian. He has other detractors who say that he said horrible things about the trans community, but it wasn't just those people. We also saw Sharon Osbourne fired from the take. The year started off with Army Hammer and those allegations, which he was fired by his agency. He was pulled from every single project that he was in. So yes, accountability culture, does continue, but let's move on to one of the happier stories of the year. Britney Spears is free. After more than 13 years, the conservatorship of the pop star was terminated. I have covered this court case. I have been at the courthouse for every single hearing on the matter, but I have to tell you, this is nowhere near done. Yes, Britney is a free woman. Make that loud and clear. There's no debate there, but the legal battle still continues. She is, of course, fighting against her father and her former business manager, TriStar Entertainment. There is a hearing that is set to take place in January January, which I'll be at, and that's going to be dealing with the financial matters, basically wondering where did Britney's money go? Yeah. Was Were the assets of her estate dissipated by her conservators? Yeah, listen, there's very few things that unite everyone, and that was the Free Britney movement. Everyone felt that, that she should have been freed a long time ago, and now that she is, we can all rest assured. One more thing that actually united us was award shows. We were watching them, well, some of us were. <laughs> we started off with the Oscars, getting into hot water because they moved Best Picture not to the end of the ceremony, but two awards before the end. And that resulted in Anthony Hopkins being named Best Actor in a shocking upset over Chadwick Boseman. Anthony Hopkins was not even there to accept his award after repeatedly asking if he could zoom in for the event. We also saw the Grammy Awards throw probably the best show during the pandemic. And then we saw the Emmys have their most diverse acting lineup in history, but at the award show, ended in Emmy So White, No Person of Color won an acting award. Award shows are at a reckoning now. They're looking to engage viewers again. They need to figure this out quick because that viewership is declining. I've written a lot of pieces on Variety about what can be done. I think you need to engage the public and I think you need to get them to care about giving awards to celebrities. You have to not only nominate the people and the properties that they want to see, but also allow them to win. So we're not just seeing the same thing over and over and over again. But I cannot believe that it has been a full, I mean, not a full year, but that it was so early in the year when the Oscars were taking place. Because I remember we were right here on the set of The Take watching together. Our jaws were on the floor yeah. when Anthony Hopkins won with that big upset of Chadwick Boseman. I mean, it is good to see that award shows are back, obviously, after the year of COVID where everything was on Zoom. It's nice to see people actually back at the podium accepting their awards. And obviously, we're going to see a lot more of that in 2022. Yes, we will. And listen, we have a lot to look forward to in 2022. So make sure you're watching us because we'll be here all next year. Yes, we will. And in the meantime, we're going to take a little holiday break for a couple of weeks, but we'll be back first thing in January. Have a safe and healthy and happy holiday to you and your loved ones from all of us here on The Take. We'll see you next year. Thanks for watching.